Okay, so in this problem, we are only focused on Q2, which is right here. Um, there are two other charges which are pushing or pulling on Q2 depending on if it's positive or negative. Q2 is negative, so it's going to be attracted to this positive. So based on this, Q2 is going to want to go in this direction. Um, based on Q3, which is negative, Q2 will also want to go in that direction. Now, if you notice, the two arrows I drew, the two forces, are both coming from Q2. But since they're both pushing in the same direction, what you're going to see is that they both push um, with a much greater force. They're like combining, they're working together to push extra hard. And that's why, our, that's, that's what you are going to find out like that. You're going to find that resultant vector, which is um, the sum of those two vectors. Okay, so the first one we'll find, we'll do uh, the blue one first. So the charge, or the force from Q1. Um, you're going to use this formula, K. Q1, Q2 over R squared. K, we said, is um, we're going to just use the simple 9 times 10 to the 9th. Q1 and Q2 are the two charges. It's actually going to be 5, point, uh, 5 times 10 to the negative 9th and, and 6 times 10 to the negative 9th. And then the distance between them is 8 microcoulombs. So it's not just 8, it's 8 times 10 to the negative 6. And then don't forget to square it. That's also part of the equation. So after you do all those, the calculation looks something like this. Uh, 9. Is there an e? 9e9. E That's the same thing as times 10 to the 9th. 5e negative 9. 6e. Now, technically, the 6 is negative since it's a negative. So I'm, I'll go ahead and put that also to the negative 9. That's all divided by. 8 e negative 6 <coughs> squared. So that's the number we get. And since it's a force, the units are newtons. So that's how much force is pushing, well not pushing, that's how much force is pulling to the left just from Q1. Um, so now I'll do the same thing except with the force from Q3. So almost all of it's the same except for the distance and the charge. So 9 times 10 to the 9th is still the same. Um, charges are different. This one is Q2 and then Q3, the new charge, is 7 times 10 to the negative 9th. And the distance has also changed some 16 times 10 to the negative 6. So I'm going to go through and just modify this a little bit. This should be a 6. Um, oh wait, that is a negative 6 over there. So I'll change this to 7. So then this needs to become 16. That's how much I get. 
Now notice this is a negative number, so that means it's going in the other direction. Oh, both of these were supposed to be negative, so negative times a negative is a positive, so I'm going to go ahead and keep that negative, or positive. Also Newtons. So now I found the force, the two forces that are pushing and pulling on Q2. Um, the resultant force is just going to be the sum of those two. So uh, 4216 plus 1476. So the total force pushing to the left. So that takes care of A and B. Um, again, blue and red are adding up to give you green. And the last part to calculate acceleration, we'll use F equals MA. Um, the force is what we just found. The mass, I think we said, was supposed to be of a neutron, which was, I think, 1.67 times 10 to the... Anybody remember? Negative 27. Negative 27 times acceleration. And so... To find acceleration, you divide by that number. So the acceleration ends up being, after you divide, huh. 1.67 E negative 27. pretty large acceleration, 3.4, and then the units are meters per second squared. It's the units for acceleration. So the entire problem looks like that. Um, here I had forgotten to do, I'm not sure where the pens are. On the calculator is times 10 to the 30th, and I forgot that, so this is times 10 to the 30th. The other question was, should this be subtraction? And the answer is no, because both forces are going to the left. That means they're, even though one is negative, one is positive, it doesn't matter because they're both going in the same direction. So the force you see is the sum of the two forces.